Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of VIP Room, episode 20. Man, Ben, we done got to episode 20 on this shit, man. Uh, how you feeling? Oh, man. man. How you feeling? Feeling good, dog. How about you, man? How about the guests, dog? We got, we got a legendary nice. member up in here, man. Facts. Two-time Pro Bowler, assistant secondary coach for the Giants right now. My dog, Coach Adams, Mike Adams. How you doing, Coach? What's up, boss? How you? I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you again. Yeah, no man, doubt. Get to no. It. Facts, man. Let's get to it, bro. So, um, you know, coming out of high school, bro, you know, you play. It's been a like you played a long time ago when you first started out. So I want to ask you because you know the recruiting process was different. Or I go, I play probably even when Bama, to be honest. So, what was your recruiting process like? It sounds like you're trying to throw a shot right now. I didn't you know, throw a shot. Right? <laughs> came out a long time ago. Hey, you did, bro, bro. When you came, bro. When you came out, bro, I was like, when you your first. Your first year, I was like two years old. Bro, I gotta say, I was two years old, bro. Like, <laughs> that's I crazy. Matt, when you put it like that, golly. That's what I'm saying. Like, so the recruit, recruiting process coming out of high school or? Yeah, out of high school, out of high school, out of high school. See, coming out of high school, it, it was, you know, they, they went hard because they came to the schools, they, they came to practice, they came to, like, scouts came to practice, they came to, games they they courted you you know they they brought you out of class they talked to you you know it wasn't no social media where um they could look at you and i know some people in high school at that time they sent vh vhs tapes you know what those are yes yes <laughs> i thought y'all might be too young for those they used to send out vhs tapes for uh or or highlight them just to uh for other coaches to see um now with social media you don't have to do any of that um but the but far as the the process for me it was i was getting recruited by all big schools um except for one and i was delaware um and it was uh, and during that whole process it was like okay if this guy doesn't come we'll take you and delaware offered me and i had that offer right in hand so um better with a bird in hand and two in the bush so i ended up going to delaware university of delaware Nah, you can go ahead, man. Growing up, who was your inspiration? Who uh, who gave you the uh, idea to play football? Who inspired you? To play? Uh, actually, my uncles. Um, they it was we we came from a football family. Nobody and nobody made the NFL but me. But um, I remember Thanksgiving, um, just playing playing in the backyard, um, um, playing in the snow with, with our uncles. They throwing us the ball, playing, uh, teaching us how to throw, teaching us how to catch. You know, and it was always competitive. I had an older brother and a younger brother who was um, actually better than I was. Um, but the whole household, we was just competitive, especially when our uncles came over. That's all we're going to do. Are we going to play football? We go to the park, play tackle football. We go on. Um, we, we find we get kicked out of parks and we go to a different park to play. So it was um, it, it, it was fun. So Football was just us. That was our that was our life. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So you know, when you first get to college, bro, first get in Delaware, I think everybody I say, I always ask this question to everybody who comes on. If you can remember, what was your hardest workout in college? Uh, 5 a.m. workouts. We had 5 a.m. workouts. Maybe no not five, not six a.m. It was like probably six a.m. workouts right before class during winter session. Um, we used to run the stadium steps up and down, all the way across, all the way across. We used to do tire rolls. Um, I think that was the hardest work because we did that um, probably twice a week, Sick, getting up six in the morning just to do that twice a week. That was a beast. Twice a week is crazy. You go ahead, man. Yeah. That was <laughs> So, Coach, have you always played safety? What other uh, side? So, just going back to high school, because I want to ask, like, what was your most memorable game from high school? Video game, like. Ooh. Uh, hold up. My, my most memorable video game or most game no. that I've uh, memorable yeah, like, you know, like a memorable game. Like, so we get a lot of guys up here. You NFL guys, like I said, from the jump, y'all show greatness from the jump. So, they, we had a uh, one day he had like seven touchdowns in one game. You see this video game. That's to me, that's video game stuff. Seven touchdowns. Cause I was I was a, a, a average player. I played D2 ball, so I wasn't as good as y'all. So hearing somebody get seven touchdowns in one game just sound like some <laughs> stuff. 
to me. So I want to know what was your video again? Because I know you got one. I know you humble, but I know you got one. No, I, oh, 100%. I got a, I got a couple of them because I played quarterback in high school. Okay. Uh, so okay. I had the ball in my hand. And we did, ran a lot of quarterbacks, ran a lot of quarterback sweeps, a lot of runs, a lot of two traps. Uh, things like that, but it was one game, and actually, um, our championship game we played at Giant Stadium, and um, I had a sixty-yarder, a eighty-yarder, a pick, I threw for two touchdowns, God and um, I had a fake punt for a touchdown. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. So I was eating. I was, yeah, crazy. Crazy. I was eating. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's probably that's probably the best game we probably done heard, man. Because goddamn, yeah, nah, for real, like you affected every 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 pretty much every every phase of football. Yeah, you did exactly. Yeah, every phase exactly. of football. Literally. Yeah. So um, you know, again, like first year at college, yeah. you know, yeah. um, we go through a lot of stuff in college. So I want to ask you because y- y'all definitely y'all had two days back then, right? Fall camps. Uh, absolutely. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, so I want to ask you, how hard was your first fall camp? Because everybody go through that phase. Yeah. Um. So I, I remember that, and I, it, it was hard for me because you know when you're the man in high school and you go to college, you're just another dude. You know, you know they wind you, wind you, and dine you to get there. Then when you get there, you're like, damn, I thought I was supposed to be starring. Then you find out you last on the depth chart. So. <laughs> It was definitely a grind just being a scout guy and just r- playing running back and letting the first team tee off on you as a freshman. Um, but it, it was definitely hard getting up in the morning, uh, just going through that whole process. And, and it, it it seemed to me like I, I can remember vividly, like it didn't get better. You know, it was just hard all the time for me, um, for us, too, as a as our, that freshman class, because we talked about it a lot how hard it was to do and um but um as things as things progress like after camp i think that's when um we saw a light at the end of the tunnel and that's when things started to get better and, and we started to really get acclimated to the speed of the other players to the um to the the routines um that that they used to do and and you know um cuz in high school, you don't know. You don't know what you don't know, and um, and and a lot of people won't show you. You got to learn. You got to listen and watch and see how other people do it. And sometimes you got to fuck it up to get it right. And we did, did a lot of fucking up. Yeah, for sure. Hey, baby, go ahead. What was a what was a moment in college where you, where uh, what was a defining moment in college that let you know that you belonged and and you could you could start and and you really could do this. Was it a practice or was it a game or what play, you know? Oh, 100%. It was a practice. It was uh, that um, spring practice. Mm-hmm. It was that. No, actually, as time went on, because I ended up playing as a true freshman after the third game. And um, like I said, I started seeing light at the end of the tunnel after camp. Things started to get easier. And then I started dominating practice. We had this thing called like Monday night football because we had play no sunday night football so we had play on saturday and everybody who didn't play in the game have to play on sunday it's like a scrimmage against each other and we used to have those scrimmages and that was my game time well I, I used to catch picks i used to hit people i used to just run like a fucking crazy dog because i i just had that energy and i wanted to play and um the next thing you know, um, someone got hurt, and then they said, "All right, we're gonna you gotta get ready, freshman. You're gonna play." And I'm like, "Okay." And I remember that first game that I played, I gave up a touchdown, and I'm like, "Fuck!" I felt like crying. I felt like shit. So as soon as I gave up the touchdown, they went for the extra point, and I was coming off the edge, and I hit the kicker. So once I hit the kicker, it was another penalty. So they ended up going for two and getting the two. So I that was the eight point swing. I just gave up eight points. Right then, it that quick, and I got to the sideline. I just felt like crying, and they they didn't even put me back in. And but the next game, I think we played Rhode Island. Yeah, it was Rhode Island. The next game, I think I needed that. I needed that where I, um I didn't play well, and I got humbled. 
right? Because that second game, I fucking went, I went crazy. I had like, I had eight tackles. I think I had, uh, I had one pick. I could have had two. I dropped one and caught one. And I was dominating special team. I was, I was like killing. That's when I was like, you know what? I belong in this shit. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. This is where I belong. I'm a, I'm a dominate this shit. Cause I can do this. Uh, that was my mindset. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, the speed passed a little bit. You know, right before the draft, about to come out and stuff. What was your own? Um, what was your draft process like? Cause everybody got old different reactions about their draft process. What was yours like coming out? Uh, so my senior year, um, I started I started getting looks like people used to come and, and check on me or whatever. But my senior year, I got hurt. I um I had a Bo Jackson injury. Um, my hip Damn. my hip popped out. I subluxed my hip, and the doctor said I couldn't play again. And um I went. That's when I redshirted because I played a true freshman, so I had to redshirt my senior year. Um, so that kind of set me back when the doctor said I couldn't play no more. But I wasn't trying to hear that shit. I I started training. I was on crutches for about um, four, three to four months. I was on crutches um, and couldn't sleep because my hip is sublux. It came out, went back in, and and I started training. Once I started training, well, rehabbing. I'm sorry. Once I started rehabbing and getting back to full strength, then I realized that like, all right, I can get back. I can get back. And then once I started getting back, my this is my senior year, I broke my leg the fifth game of the season. Then I broke my when I broke my leg, I'm like, damn, all the scouts running away now. So I ended up coming back in four weeks after that. Um, because I broke my fibula. I came back in four weeks. We ended up winning the nat- national championship, and I was training. And then uh, teams was coming to see me. They were saying I was injury prone. I was this and that. I had to run a forty. Ran a forty. I ran a four three. They made me run a three times. I ran a four three two, four three five, and a four no four three eight, four three five, and a four three five. Um. So when I did that, then I, I felt like I'm like, all right, I probably made some money. I'm gonna get drafted. But end up not happening, which was cool, um, because I had teams calling me like during the draft, and the teams that was calling me wasn't even in contact with, contact with me, like 49ers, the Colts, the uh, the Saints, uh, Eagles. Um, so I had a I had a good amount saying that oh seventh round, then they like oh we want to get you in free agent, so they're trying to keep me close. But long story short, I ended up going to um, San Francisco for twenty five hundred dollars. That was my signing bonus. My signing bonus was twenty five hundred dollars to go to San Francisco, and I strategically did that because it was teams that was offering me thirty, fifty. Um, <laughs> the Saints was at like twenty five, twenty five hundred out, like just to try out twenty five k. Uh, but it was just a, uh, it was like a free agent, like just to get on a camp body, right? So when I signed, when I decided to go to San Francisco for twenty five hundred dollars, I went because I looked at their roster as the draft was going on. I was looking at the roster, who they drafted, and who they got coming back, and then that's how I kind of determined, like, okay, I can compete with him. I can compete with him. It was a lot of people that I couldn't. I was like, yeah, I got no chance with the Colts, Bob Sanders. I got this guy here. You got D'Angelo Hall. I'm like, Cause we had a deep draft. So um, I ended up going to San Francisco, and then it ended up working out. I was on the practice squad for the first eight games. And then after that, I got elevated on the practice squad. I probably was making, I was making $4,300 a week. After taxes, I was seeing twenty three hundred dollars a week on a practice squad in San Francisco. Damn, that's crazy. This is the shit. That then, is. then I ended up, they elevated me because somebody got hurt. Realest thing a coach ever told me. He sat me down myself and Rashawn Reed. I remember. He said, "Because um, Jimmy Williams got hurt, God bless his soul." He was like, "All right, if this guy, if it might, it might, if you play well, you're gonna stay up." If you don't, you're going back on the practice squad. Ray Sean, if you play well, you're going to stay up. 
and, and then you go back on the, if you don't you go back on the practice squad we like all right let's go we gotta compete it was on up to us too so he ended up uh hitting somebody forcing a fumble and i recovered it so we came out even but we ended up both staying up <laughs> we ended up both staying up but i tell you one thing and i know i'm long-winded but when i saw that check and i was getting three thirteen five a week instead of 2300 a week I told them motherfuckers I ain't never going back to practice school. I started busting my ass. So that so that was like motivation. You know, everybody got their different wives and and me as a young cat coming from the hood and coming from nothing, that that check right there was my motivation. Now and, and I never went to back to the practice squad again. Fact, you, go ahead. You go ahead, Ben. Uh, so yeah, I was going to speak on that, man. I see you from Patterson, New Jersey. Can you talk about what it was like growing up and just the football culture up there growing up? I know you said you and your family kind of was a football family, but can you just talk about it? Because me, when I just think of New Jersey, especially Patterson, I think of Fetty Wap. Hey, and I know that that shit the hood, you know what I mean? So I really don't think about football when I think about Patterson. So can you just speak to that? Uh, yeah, you think about uh, you. You you must be like twenty one years old talking about. Nah, talking bro, about- I'm, I'm thirty two. So so I'm thirty two. That was towards when I was in college when Fetty Wap was like out. So yeah, that's why I think about Fetty Wap. <laughs> Seriously though, that was when I was in. That's when I was in college. You know, during 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 my heyday. You know? Nah, it, it's all good. Fetty Wap, he, he used to roll with my uh my little brother. So they all they all was in that same little clique. And uh, good thing, good good for him though. I um I was happy for him when he blew like he did but um football in patterson it was some it and it's not the same anymore we played in the street where cars going by and it's like you got to stop let the car go by then we then you go ahead and line up again you know all right car come hold up all right go ahead then we line up again that's how it was because no one had grass in their backyard the parks was uh contaminated um a lot of Big broken beer bottles and uh drug paraphernalia and stuff like that so we played in the street you know and you don't see that anymore and i, and I think kind of, and, and getting those scrapes and bruises on the concrete kind of toughened us up a little bit and um uh, not just me and my family like it was just football all around like we loved football you know that was the thing and sometimes you know sometimes you gotta use what you have to get out the hood some people are not that smart so we got to use our athletic ability to get out some people are geniuses and smart so that's that's the way they get out you know the, i'm talking about the hood or their their situation whatever that may be um but yeah um that was the football culture playing in the street and just loving it and loving it coming to the house before the street lights come on yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hey, um, you know, talking about because you, you know, you had a great ass story, of course, with the practice squad and stuff like that. So I want to ask you this: um, what was your welcome to the NFL moment? Ooh, probably my second year in the league. Um, I got his jersey hanging up right here in my uh in my man cave. But Brian Westbrook, we had a um. We had a little rivalry going on because Delaware Villanova, uh, we played them and one game he tallied up probably about fucking almost 450 yards in one game on us by himself. So he threw the ball, he ran the ball, he did punt return, he did kick return, he did every fucking thing. And um, I we used to always just talk shit and we, we became tight. but. He was playing for the Eagles, and then when I ended up going to San Francisco, uh, we linked up before the game. We started talking, started reminiscing about Delaware, Delaware, and uh, Villanova. Then the game started, and he taught me something too. But the game started, and I think we were. It was it was a close game. Second half came. They gave him the ball, and he came run, running through untouched, untouched, and he uh. It was just me and him, and we caught eye to eye. And I was just gonna just push him out of bounds. And as he got to the sideline, I went to push him out of bounds, and he just stiffed on me. <laughs> and went, God damn, Trent, you laughing hard as hell. <laughs> yeah, he is. I knew he was gonna ball. The, the way how you about to pan the story, I knew he was gonna do some whole shit. 
Damn. He stiff armed the shit out of me. And when he did it, I was so shocked and I, I froze. And he ended up going like 98, not 90, it was like 79 yards for the touchdown. Damn. And and I'm and I'm like, I'm feeling like shit. But oh. Hello? Yeah, you straight, you straight. Yeah, you, yeah, you good. Hold on, but I can't see you guys. Hold on one second. Yeah. Oh, there you go. My bad. Yeah. So, um, so I got to, I was feeling like shit, not just after that game, but all week. And I started to think about it, but he taught me something. And we cool. We all, we all cool in the game, you know, uh, loving each other up. What's up, man? Remember, we were, like, play because we played together, we played against each other. But when no, when you're in between those lines, you're trying to feed your family. We got to go eat. Yeah, we ain't taking it easy on nobody. And I'm not saying I took it easy on him because I think tackling him in an open field was one of the hardest things anybody can do because he would never get tackled in an open field. He was so shifty. And I just tried to push him out of bounds. But he made me look crazy. And now I know, and, and I carried it on with me for every fucking game. And every time I play, I don't care if I knew you. If you ran that ball and you was next to him, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to put, I, I because I, my family got to eat too. And like, he saw it like that. And he, he was like three years old, uh, I think two two years ahead of me. But he taught me something. And, and that was a great lesson for me moving forward as a young guy and unfortunately had to learn it in that manner being fucking stiff arm and him running for 80 yards but it is what it, it is what it is you go ahead man well we talked about the low light i gotta talk about the highlight you did something that's very 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 rare and i want to know how did it feel and what was the what was the reaction from who you did it to you picked off Tom Brady not once, but twice in the game. The 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 GOAT, some would call it. Great White Hope. Picked him off <laughs> twice, not once, but twice. How did that feel? And like what 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 zone was because I know it's like um we talked uh to Jalen Collins from the Raw Room. I, I feel like it's some type of like aura with Tom Brady. So like what what is your mindset, hey, going into the week and what did it feel like once you picked him off, not once but twice? First off, it it's always a great thing to pick off a great player or you do something to a great player. You know what I mean? I tip my hat off to him because when I look at my schedule, in the, at, when, when they set the schedule, when I look at my schedule as a defensive player, I'm looking at all the quarterbacks we face. And, and if I'm playing against Tom Brady and if I'm playing against Aaron Rodgers, I'm not – counting those as interceptions if that makes sense they're bonus so for me they pick them off twice or me a pick Aaron Rodgers off because they don't really throw picks you know what I'm saying they don't throw picks so when you catch those picks those are the bonus those bonus picks but then when you get then when you get somebody like uh I don't, I don't want to say her name when you get a, a a second tier or third tier quarterback yeah you you expected them pick them off you expect it to, and you should. And and if you don't, that's like you kind of get set back. You know what I mean? Because not not yeah, you get set back because it, it takes you off your game a little bit. Because at the beginning of the season, I have goals. I, I want to get three picks. I want to get five picks. Whatever it is. And I'm not gonna circle Tom Brady. I'm not gonna circle Aaron Rodgers because those are the hardest picks. But when some quarterback get hurt and the backup coming in, oh shoot, oh shit, you gotta smell fucking blood in the water you know what i'm saying so it was it was it was a pleasure like i mean it was it was dope i mean actually this the this the um this the game right here yeah that's fire <laughs> he said this the game right here when i when i picked them off um and it, and it was it was awesome it was awesome because the the crowd in that stadium went crazy and and if you know if you ever play for the Colts, that stadium don't get loud for defense at all. But they got <laughs> loud that day. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. 
So, um, what was I about to ask you? Oh, to keep talking about highlights, bro. Um, later on in your career, you made back to back pro, pro bowls. I want to just ask you, how did it feel to just like those years specifically when you made back to back pro bowl years? Yeah, ah, uh, shit. Again, like, I thought, like, I think to make it to the Pro Bowl period is an honor, right? Because you being, you being chosen by your peers and you being chosen by coaches. You know, those are the ones that really, really matter. You know, fans are fans because somebody might not like me and they ain't gonna, I could have the best stats in the world, but they're not going to choose me because I'm not on their team. Yeah. Now, it's different. It's different. It's a different with players because we we respect each other. We like, oh shit, he had a great year, man. Let me vote for him. And I think that's what made it more special for me. It made it an honor for me because um, I was chosen by my peers and and coaches. So, I, and especially the later part in my career, um, doing that, I think it was year um, thirteen and uh, thirteen and fourteen, or year twelve and thirteen that I made the Pro Bowls. So, and I, I just thought that was that was awesome for me, and it was a great accomplishment, and it was one of my goals. Yeah, for sure. You go ahead, on them. What was uh What was the hardest offense you ever faced in practice? Because uh, I saw you play for the Broncos and you played for the Colts. I'm, that's what that was with Andrew Luck, and then I'm assuming the Broncos that had to be with Peyton Manning, 2012 and 2013, correct? <laughs> Oh uh, well, yeah, Broncos. Um, cause Broncos, we had so many weapons that year. Um, God rest his soul, DT. Um, yeah. Demarius Thomas. We had Eric Decker. We had Wes Walker. We had Julian Thomas. Um, running back. Um, CJ Anderson. Ronnie Hill. We had those guys on offense. Um, and going against them, we had a good defense too, but. We challenged everybody every day to to get better, you know. Um, because I, I I was alongside of Champ Bailey, Chris Harris, you know, guys like that, uh Tracy Porter, Duke Ianacho. Um, like it Quentin Jammer was with us, Michael Huff, Jimmy Leonard. Like we had a we had a lot of people in the second there, a lot of competition, Raheem Moore. So it, it was good. It was it was good just to um had that competition, but it, it was easy to um from a collective standpoint, Denver Broncos. Cool, cool. Speaking about the Denver Broncos, I, for, I, I forgot you was on the Broncos that you were paid, man. Had that like literally, literally say it's the greatest season of all time. So how was it just to witness him have that season? Cause you know, fifty four hundred touchdowns. 50 TDs, bro. That shit was insane. I was sure. like, what is that? Like, just being a part and just witnessing it, it was like painting the picture. It was like crazy. Because we we had meetings, like, um, we had captain meetings. And I was one of those captains. Like, so we'd sit at a table and we'd discuss with, um, with John Fox um, what we like about the game plan. How, who's struggling? What should we do? Just, just stuff. It was a leadership council, basically. And Eric Eric Decker was struggling. Um, he he was struggling. We playing Kent. We about to play Kansas City, and Eric he wasn't throwing Eric Decker the ball. Eric Decker he was dropping balls. He he was struggling a little bit. So uh, Julian Thomas and Demarius was getting all the love, and we in um the meeting. And then we like, and Fox was like, "Yeah, um, Demar, what? Yeah, um, Decker's struggling a little bit. Payne's like, ah, don't worry about it. I get him three touchdowns this game. Don't worry. He ended up getting like, I think four touchdowns. <laughs> because it was, I think it was like a Sunday night. It was a Sunday night or Thursday night game against Kansas City. And uh, was the cornerback Smith? Big Smith, big dude, big corner. I forget his first name, but he torched him. I think for." Three tuds, three or four touchdowns. And Damn right then and there, Peyton Manning got him right back on track. Everybody get 10 plus touchdowns. Peyton Manning. I mean, uh Eric Decker, J Julian Thomas, Demarius Thomas, 10 plus touchdowns for everybody. Yeah, that's crazy. You can go home, go ahead, Bama. Um, so this is sometimes I want to ask 
So I'm up at the junior college with uh with, with junior college athletes. So you know they how they think they NFL worthy and all of that. Can you speak to some of the work ethic that you had to put in in order to get where you are today? Like I just have to have this on voice record from the NFL guys because, like I said, a problem. You know, everybody claim they NFL worthy, but I feel like them boys don't put the NFL work in. But I never went to the NFL, so I want them to hear it from NFL guys. So can you speak to some of your work ethic and maybe like a few drills you felt like as a coach now, you know what I'm saying, that probably would benefit an athlete, you know, that possibly can play. I don't know. but So so for me, I always wanted to get the edge because I was undrafted. So they always bring somebody to replace me, right? So for me, I, I did a rocky workout. Like I ran hills. I ran steps. I um I did all my drills on the hill. I worked the sandbox. I did I ran routes and not routes, but I backpedal break. I did all that in the sandbox. I did those was all training resistant stuff. Um, because on the sand, you you know, you're working on get that stability or whatever. I did pull-ups, I did push-ups, I did dips. I did all of that in the off season. I got that inner body because for me, I did yoga, I did um Big, I did hot yoga, I did warm yoga, I did pot, uh, um, dry needling, got a massage twice a week. I did all of that stuff because for me, if you can master your own body weight when you get in the weight room, it's easy, right? And to go back to your question, like, and that's well, that's part of the uh, answer to your question how I worked out. And the thing, thing about me was even in the off season. I worked out twice a day. Like it wasn't a one day and do this. Like, and and also a lot of people like to go out and do that. Me too. I love going out. Yeah. But I'm gonna get up in the morning, the next morning, I'm gonna sweat that shit out and I'm gonna work out hard as hell, even more. You know what I'm saying? Some people be like, oh, I can't get up. Nah, for me, it was never a day where like I don't feel like doing it. It was never a day like that. Why? Because I wanted that shit so bad. Some people didn't want to study like you got to study you don't study you you asked out like you you already a step behind like it's 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 a lot of shit that you got to do when people are not watching it's a lot of extra shit you got to do that you don't know you can't just work hard shit everybody work hard <laughs> what makes you special though right. what right. makes you different because i work hard too but people don't understand when you work hard, that just gives you an opportunity. Hard work just gives you opportunity. It's not guaranteeing you shit. It's not guarantee you go to the NFL. It's not guarantee you win a game. It's not guarantee you any of that shit. Only thing is guaranteeing you is that you have an opportunity. And that's what I think people fail to realize. Like, shit, we all work hard, but you you got to do a little bit more. What's it? What makes you different? What makes you different? from the pack all of this is about your coach having to tell you right oh uh, yeah no question no question and then when i go back and all the little stuff that he tell me that i need to work on then i start working on that shit. but nah man i i i really had a coach tell me i had to do some more or or i had to work on some because one thing one thing about me one thing you can control right you can control being in shape. Yep. And I was never out of shape. My thing is, if a player, you come out of shape, that's your fucking fault. You don't mm -hmm. deserve to make the team then if you out of shape. If you up all night and then you can't finish your run the next morning, <laughs> you got to work out the next morning, you don't do it, that's on you. That's on you. That's your fault. That's something you can control. Mm. And that's what my trainer always told me. I Shit, when I was in Delaware, I had to drive to pee. I had to drive an hour and 20 minutes just to work out. And he told me, one thing you can control is being in shape. If you ain't in shape, you got no chance. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, I want to ask you this, though, because it's kind of like a it's kind of like a piggy back on what Ben was asking, but it's kind of different. Because, you know, you was able to stay in the league for a long-ass time. And another saying for the NFL is not for long. So I want to ask you personally, how are you able to stay in the league for so long? Because I think you stayed from 2004 or it's like 2019. It's a good ass. That's a long ass time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, 
ask you, like, yeah. how are you able to stay in the league for so long, in your opinion? Yeah, 16 years. And, and I get that question a lot. And, and the only thing I can say is consistency. You know, I was consistent. And not just not just on the field, not just in the classroom. I was consistent off the field, too. I never got no bullshit, no trouble. Um, I, I always did what I was supposed to do when I was supposed to do it, whether I felt like it or not. That was my self-discipline. And um, I took care of my body. Like, I had a routine. Young guys, when you come in the league, you got to have a routine. After the game, what you going to do? After the game, she always, I, I ate with the family. I chill with the family. The next day, I watch film, correct it. I run just to get a sweat in. Then I got my massages. I got my dry needling. See my chiropractor. Then Wednesday, I'm seeing my chiropractor again. Friday, I'm doing dry needling. Cry, um, but all week, I'm doing hot tub, cold tub. And then Friday, I'm doing my dry needling again. And then I'm seeing my chiropractor. And I, I never once missed a day. Never. Never once missed a day. I never once deviated from my routine to, and I sacrificed that to do some other bullshit. Like go see a girl, pick somebody up from the airport. No, I got to, if you don't come in this time, I can't come pick you up. Or you got to catch a taxi or you got to Uber, whatever it is, right? Because I wasn't going to sacrifice whatever I, ha I had to do to be prepared for the game to, for someone else. And, and a tribute to that, the consistency part, I never, I knock on wood, I never had surgery. I never had a major surgery in 16 years. And that attributes to the consistency of doing what the fuck I supposed to do. Like, even if I go out and I drink at night and I'm fucked up, I ain't just gonna go go and go to practice and go into meetings. No. I'm going to steam room, sweat it out, going to sauna, sweat it out, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna run, sweat it out more, get get those juices flowing, get a massage and hydrate. Hydrate. Before I get on that field, then I won't be pulling something or get some something wrong, because I don't want to make it seem like I'm this saint. I'm not no, I'm not a saint. I like to go out and I like to have fun too. We all do. We all make this money to do that. And I, I party. I went out. We did. We all did that shit. But you gotta have. You gotta be disciplined enough to handle the consequences the next day and do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, whether you feel like it or not. Again, that's my self-discipline to go out and and fucking hit the sauna and do all that little shit before you get on that field. So to answer your question, long story short, one word, consistency. Facts, facts, facts. You can go ahead, man. Oh, we appreciate we appreciate this knowledge you're dropping, Coach. Like, seriously, man. Like, I, I can't thank you so much. I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, one question well, I want to know, after you, after you took care of the fam, moms, pops, everybody, what you bought with your first check? Your first big, big, big payday. Yeah, it took me a while to be my first payday. I was playing minimum for a long time. I ain't make I ain't make my first million to six years in the league, bro. So uh, it's been a minute, but the first thing I did buy, I, I bought it. I bought a crib for grandma. You know what I mean for my grandmother. Um, yep, my my mom, God rest her soul. Right before the, right after the draft, she passed away in May. So God rest her soul. And uh that was that was the one big purchase that I bought for my grandma. And um yeah, and I built me a house, so now we I'm good. Nah, yeah. nah, that's tough, that's tough. You know, you know, after your playing days, man, what what made you want to get into coaching? I have no fucking clue. I ask myself that every day. <laughs> what am I doing? What are you doing right now? But I, I love the game. I love to compete and like being around the guys. It, it's it's fun. It's still fun. Um, it's the only place where you can talk shit and bullshit, and you can say you can say things and not be reprimanded for it and not get in trouble for it. You know, um, and it, and it's a it's a safe place for me. Um, through all the injuries, through all the death, through everything that's been going on in my career, through every time every time somebody tried to replace me, like. For me, that field was my safe haven. You know, I felt safe in there. 
And that's what continued me to want to keep playing. And now um, I'm coaching because now I'm still feeling safe. Not that I'm afraid to step out of that because I'm not. I'm talented enough to do a lot of things, commentating and all the other stuff. I'm talented enough to, you know, I still got real estate businesses. I still talented enough to do everything. So football is, is not like end all be all for me. But for me, it's a safe haven. And I love being in the guys and creating relationships and doing things like that. Okay, cool, cool. You go ahead, Bama. So you spoke on it a little bit. Uh, I'm always big on the man up under the pads, right? So if you wasn't playing football, what would you be doing? Like what, what other interests off the field that you possibly would be doing if you didn't play football? Um, Probably real estate or, or something with kids. Because um, uh, before I got to NFL and college, I was working at a, a treatment center, a, a group home. Oh, okay. I was working at a group home for um, – for um, at risk uh, youth, and and that was pretty eye opening to see what they were going through. Um, whether it was abuse, whether it was you know um, drug addiction, uh, parents not wanting them, like just seeing them and hearing all the stories, you know, I would have definitely um, been leaning towards being in something in that realm. All right, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, quick. Well, I'm gonna ask you. Not, not right, much. You, in the, you in the bathroom about to take a shit or something? What you doing? Nah, bro, I'm, <laughs> sick, man. I'm sick, bro. I'm yeah. sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. What the hell? Bro, I'm sick. I came. I came back from Philly from WrestleMania, bro. I'm sick, so I just blow my nose. Oh, you was in. You was in Philly for WrestleMania. Yeah, that's why I got the beanie on. So yeah, I was there. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was sick. It was cold out there. So now nah, I tell you, know, I ask you. I always gotta ask players this play position. If you have a list, if you could think of one, no order, can I get your top five safeties in the league right now? Right, right now. Yeah, right now, no order. Okay. Xavier McKinney. Thanks. Um, um, I like Kyle Kyle Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Baltimore. Um, Winfield, Tampa. Um, that's three. Yes, three. Winfield, Tampa. Um, I still, I still, I still think Justin is top tier. Um, Broncos, Justin. Um, Simmons. Justin Simmons. I think I still think he's top tier quarter. Um, safety. I like him. Um, who am I missing? Poor. Diggs and Adams. No. I probably would put right now, since he finished and played at a high level last year, and I can't really think of nobody off the top of my head anymore. I put Jason Pinnock in that. Okay. I put I put Jay Penn in that. And and I might be a little biased, but he had a fucking a monster year last year. Yeah, shout out JP. Shout out JP for sure. Because for sure. I do like, uh, oh yeah, uh, just because I because my honorable mention, I still got Justin Reed in Kansas City and the Bat Honey Badger. They still play at a high level, yeah. but um, but right now that that young boy Kyle Kyle is, is something different over there in Baltimore. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Hey, you go ahead, Bama, before we head out. Uh, do you know your all time list? It's an all time safeties list, man. All your time. Top, your top five safeties all time. Yeah, no yeah. order, no order, no order, no order. Yeah. I, I just be needing that all time because these young cats, even though I'm 32, these young cats be getting on my nerves, man. They be trying to now they're trying to be done with old school football coach, and I ain't with it, man. You can't be done because nah. I'm putting Ronnie Lott up in there, man. For sure. Man, I'm putting, For sure. I'm putting Rob Wilson and Charles Wilson, even though they tweeners, yeah. like I, they hybrid. So I'm gonna leave them out, I'm gonna leave them out. Cause they did play corner, then move to safety. I'm gonna leave them out. Pure safeties. Yeah, pure yeah, yeah. But they, they, they in there. They in there for yeah, me. for sure. But um, uh, I'm gonna go with Ronnie Lott. I was a uh, um, uh, you know I gotta go Palomaho, Air Reed, going them too. Um, who else is one of my guys? Um, Dawkins. Brian Dawkins and 
What's that kid name? He, he wore number he he was number 20 for the Broncos and then for San Francisco 49ers. Oh yeah. Come on. You gotta put yourself in there, right? Come you got on. To, bro. <laughs> got to. That's what I'm and, talking about. And that boy Trent looking like, I don't know who the fuck he is. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he said he said Steph, I mean, he said Broncos like oh he got to talk about this. Yeah, I, yeah. I I got some other people in mind, but I'm, I might as well throw myself in there. Fuck yeah, that. Sure. gonna toot my home, but me. So let me do that. Nah, <laughs> nah, you can, man. I tell I tell all of them casuals that be on the podcast. A lot of y'all boys can be superstars, man. It's just a matter of opportunity and you know, uh, fit to scheme because. 1600 people out of out of uh, just in America, it's 350 million people in America. Y'all, the top 1600 football players. Oh, man. Just think about that. I'm not just gonna assume that it's a real big difference between you and uh, uh Palomalu because, like, yeah, I mean, sometimes it is, but come on, bro, like, y'all on the same field, y'all share the same locker rooms and, and, and areas. So, I'm not just gonna think the fall off is just that crazy, you know what I'm no saying? Doubt. So, no yeah. doubt, 100%. Yeah, facts. Bam, you got any more questions? Oh, uh, no, nah, that's it, man. Uh, we appreciate you for dropping that knowledge. Man, I'm a, I'm a fan of the game, man. You know, I'm a, I was an undersized player, and, you know, I wish I had some of the game that you just dropped today, dog. That's why I try to present it to the to the football players and the students that I uh, that I be around and I coach and stuff. So, yeah, I appreciate man. that. I, coach, I appreciate you coming out, man. I appreciate everybody that came out in the chat, man. Make sure y'all like, subscribe. We 53 away from 1,000. We had just started last September, bro. We about to, we, we coming fast, bro. We coming fast, but we just started last September. So, man, appreciate you again, Coach, for coming out, bro. And make sure, again, like, subscribe, tap into the VIP, VIP rooms, flag on the play. And yeah, we out. Peace. Yes, sir.